I would separate them first into personality disorders versus psychotic disorders because two of these are just personality disorders. Those are schizoid personality disorder and schizotypal personality disorder. Now, the difference between these two are, are actually pretty big, but since they sound so much alike, a lot of medical students have a really hard time understanding what makes schizoid different from schizotypal. Now, again, these are personality disorders, so that is to say that they are a pervasive set of traits that make up a personality. So they're not a psychotic disorder, they're just a set of traits that people can have. So someone might have a schizoid personality disorder or a schizotypal personality disorder if their personality is made up of different traits. So let's get into what separates these two. So we've got schizoid on top and schizotypal on the bottom. Now, your schizoid personality disorder is gonna be a person with no interest in relationships. They're gonna be very seclusive to self. They're gonna be your quote, loner. loner. These are the people that work at night, they stay home during the day, maybe they sleep a little, they're, they're hardcore gamers normally because they don't have to interact with people, they feel safe in the comfort of their home, and they like being alone. Now, if you contrast that with schizotypal, which is a completely different set of traits, these are your eccentric, magically thinking people. So they're very strange, right? They're very strange. They have odd beliefs. They're very aloof. They dress completely the opposite of what, you know, common society might deem as appropriate. And this is a malignant personality, which is to say that schizotypal, of all the personality disorders, has the highest likelihood of transitioning from a true personality disorder into an actual psychotic disorder. So if you ever see a question, which of the following personality disorders is most likely to have actual psychotic symptoms and move into the spectrum of psychotic disorders, such as schizophrenia, etc. The answer is schizotypal. But again, this is schizoid personality disorder versus schizotypal personality disorder. And I think that these examples are best illustrated with some um, examples in media and pop culture so that you can really remember them. So if you've ever seen the show Mr. Robot, Elliot from Mr. Robot has schizoid personality disorder. He's, a, he's, you know, he's very seclusive to self. He's a loner. He's a gamer. He doesn't want to do things that require a lot of community involvement. He really likes to keep to himself. He walks around with his hood up, does not engage with other people. Whereas your schizotypal, your odd, magically thinking person who has these strange beliefs and dresses very strangely is going to be Doc from Back to the Future. Okay? Now, what I've bolded in red here next to schizoid is that these people have no interest in relationships. And that's very important because oftentimes on exams, on USMLE and Comlex, they're going to give you a clinical vignette where they talk about somebody who has never had relationships and they're going to ask you to differentiate between schizoid personality disorder and another personality disorder that's not on the slide called avoidant personality disorder. So really quickly I just want to touch on the difference here. So schizoid personality disorder does not have relationships and does not want them. Avoidant personality disorder does not have relationships but wants them. So the reason that the avoidant personality disorder doesn't have a relationship is because they're scared of what the other person in the relationship might think of them or what other people may think of them if they put themselves you know, out there. So avoidant personality disorder, the person is not in relationships, but that's because they're scared and they're embarrassed, okay? So that's the difference. Schizotypal is gonna be your magically thinking, odd, eccentric, kind of strange person, most likely to transition into the schizophrenia spectrum. So these are our personality disorders that start with schiz, schizoid and schizotypal. So if we get back to our flow chart here, now we can look on the psychotic disorder side. And this is really this, what I call the schizophrenia spectrum, right? So schizophreniform, schizophrenia, schizoaffective disorder, and then all of the depression and bipolar with psychotic features. So let's talk about what separates all of these things. And I think that the best way to do that is to use what I call the schizo timeline. So a lot of what they'll ask you on USMLE and Comlex will be totally dependent on how long the symptoms have been going on for because the DSM-5 categorizes these based on time in addition to just symptoms. So with that in mind, let's break this timeline down into zero months, one month, and six months of symptoms. Now, on this timeline, when I say symptoms, I'm referring to psychotic symptoms. So I'm referring to the presence of hallucinations, right? Visual hallucinations, auditory hallucinations, but mostly auditory, um, paranoia, delusional content, right? True psychotic symptoms. You look at somebody, you know that they're psychotic. So if you've had symptoms, psychotic symptoms, for up to a month, but no more, you have what's called brief psychotic disorder. 
So it's not schizophrenia yet because schizophrenia requires more time, but up to one month of psychotic symptoms is brief psychotic disorder. Now, if you have more than one month, but less than six months, that is called schizophreniform disorder. So same symptomatology here. Someone might have auditory hallucinations, looks really disorganized, is very malodorous, they're not caring for themselves, is clearly psychotic, but it's only been going on for say five months, that's schizophreniform disorder. If it's the same symptoms, but going on for one month or less, it's brief psychotic disorder. Now, once they hit that six month mark and they get over six months, that's when it qualifies as schizophrenia. So a really, really high yield is understanding these three timelines right here. So schizophrenia is six or, six or more. Phreniform is one to six and less than one is brief psychotic disorder. You absolutely need to commit this to memory. It's very, very high yield. I think that brief psychotic disorder is probably easy to remember because it has the word brief in the title. So if you can remember the one month mark, you'll know that brief psychotic disorder is the one that's one month or less. Schizophreniform has the word form at the end of the word. So the way that I remember that is that between one and six months, you're, you're not quite there at schizophrenia yet, but you're forming into a schizophrenic. So uh, between one and six months, you have schizophreniform because you're kind of forming your way into true schizophrenia. And then at six months and beyond, you have full-blown schizophrenia. So please, please commit this to memory. This timeline is absolutely high yield. I think that this is the best method of learning these. So you obviously need to know the symptoms of psychosis, but once you have that in mind, you need to know the timeline because it's the most important piece for getting the questions correct on USMLE and Comlex. So now that we have this in mind, and here's our timeline with the actual diagnoses written where they belong, we should talk about what schizoaffective disorder is. So schizoaffective disorder is, is a really complex disorder that really throws medical students for a loop because it overlaps so closely with not only schizophrenia, but also major depressive disorder and bipolar disorder. So schizoaffective disorder, the way that you can understand this is by looking at the word. So literally the word is schizo plus affective. So the word schizo refers to the psychotic symptoms, right? So the, the auditory hallucinations, the paranoia, the delusions, the disorganized thinking, the impoverished speech, that's all what the schizo refers to. But affective, when we say someone has an affective disorder, what we mean is that they have mood symptoms, right? They're either depressed or bipolar. So if you remember, depressed, they have SIG ECAPS symptoms, right? So decreased sleep, decreased interest, they have feelings of guilt, low energy, low concentration, decreased appetite, psychomotor retardation, or suicidality. So any of the SIG ECAPS symptoms, that is an affective symptom, right? Affective just means mood. It's a fancy way of saying mood. So affective disorders are major depressive disorder, bipolar disorder. So when we say schizoaffective, we're saying the person is schizo, right? They have psychotic symptoms, but then we're also saying that they have mood or affective symptoms. So they also have SIG ECAPS symptoms. Now, likewise, they can, the affective part doesn't necessarily need to be depression, it could be mania, it could be bipolar. So if they have mania or hypomania, then schizoaffective disorder, bipolar type, would be someone who has the psychotic symptoms, right, the schizo part, but then the affective part is actually your dig fast symptoms, right? So your symptoms of mania, right? Like distractibility, you know, flight of ideas, very talkative speech, sexual indiscretion, all that stuff. So the dig fast symptoms are what would be schizoaffective disorder, comma, bipolar type. So now the really important thing with schizoaffective disorder is differentiating schizoaffective disorder bipolar type or schizoaffective disorder depressed type from major depressive disorder with psychotic features and bipolar disorder with psychotic features. Because as you can see by looking at this list, all four of these diseases share symptoms with at least two of the other ones on the list. So the way that you make the diagnosis, the way that you get the question right on USMLE or COMLEX is based on which is the primary disorder. Okay, so I'm going to explain what I mean. The primary disorder is going to be how you name it. So when we say schizoaffective disorder, depressed type, the primary disorder is the schizo part, right? It's the psychotic part, and the depressed type is the secondary feature. When we say major depressive disorder with psychotic features, the major depressive disorder is the primary disorder, and the psychotic features are the secondary disorder. Now, how do you figure out which one's primary and which one is secondary? So whichever one exists by itself for at least two weeks without the other one, 
is the primary disorder. So if somebody has major depressive symptoms, right, SIG ECAPS symptoms for at least two weeks, and during those two weeks they have no psychotic symptoms, then the primary disorder is major depressive disorder. But because at some point they also get psychotic features, right, so they get hallucinations, they get paranoia, they get whatever, then the with psychotic features is the secondary part. So therefore, when you would name that diagnosis, because the SIG cap symptoms occur in isolation without psychosis for at least two weeks, it's major depressive disorder with psychotic features. Let's do a different example. Let's say that somebody for two weeks had auditory hallucinations. They felt like their TV was talking to them. They were concerned that the government was out to steal all of their money and they heard voices telling them to jump off of a bridge. Now, all of those symptoms were happening for three and a half weeks, and during that time, those were the only symptoms reported. And then after those three and a half weeks, for another, let's say, five weeks, the person had, uh, was staying up all night. They went out. They spent a ton of money. In fact, they spent all of their money. They had sex with 20 people that they don't know. They contracted a sexually transmitted disease, and they had just nonstop talking, okay? Now, when those symptoms were going on, they were still psychotic. So how would you name that disorder? So the answer to that one is that it's going to be schizoaffective disorder bipolar type, because I told you that the psychotic symptoms initially happened at least two weeks by themselves with no affective symptoms. But then when the affective symptoms, right, the bipolar symptoms, the dig fest symptoms, when those started, they happened concurrently with the psychotic features. So again, the key to getting this right is to get the primary diagnosis, right? The primary symptoms at least two weeks without the other ones. So if it's, if it's, if it's psychotic symptoms alone without affective symptoms, then you know that it's gonna be one of the schizoaffective diagnoses. But if it's affective symptoms, right? Like SIGI caps or dig fast symptoms without psychosis for at least two weeks, then we're talking about either MDD with psychosis or bipolar with psychosis. So again, the key here Again, I'm just saying it one more time because it's so important because it's on exams all the freaking time. Whichever one happens for at least two weeks by itself without the other part is the primary disorder. And then that little second part of the name where you put the comma in, that's the, that's the secondary uh, symptom that occurs for however long, but it happens with the primary one. So affective with psychosis on top of each other if the person was, before that was just depressed, it would be MDD with psychotic features because whichever one happens alone is how you name the disorder. So that's schizoaffective disorder, the depressed type, the bipolar type, and that's bipolar with psychosis and MDD with psychosis. And guys, that's it. So I know that this last slide was probably the most difficult part and I really suggest that you rewatch this and you read heavily about what makes schizoaffective disorder different from all of these other disorders you see here. But at the end of the day, all of these terms are very unique and they are different based on timeline, based on symptoms. So just take some time and learn this because on your test day, I want this to be free points for you. Good luck.